Hi guys, welcome to the session. Today we are going to discuss about the creating a decision tree. In the previous uh, video, in the previous session, we discussed about uh, what is a decision tree, how the decision tree will work, what is the users of the decision tree. And now we are going to discuss about the creating a decision tree and how to create the decision tree or what are the steps we are following to create a decision tree. Let's start the session. For creating example of the creating a decision tree, the majorly the to create a decision tree, we are following two steps. One is a learning step, and the second one is a classification step. In the learning step, the data is fed into a system to be analyzed by the classification algorithm, and the uh, analyzed data will be sent to the classification model to design to construct a decision. Tree. For example, if the class label is the attribute that is a loan decision. Loan decision means that is related to the banking data. The model built from the training data is representing in the form of the decision rules. And each and every step will be followed by the decision rules only. Uh, by these decision rules, whatever the data is uh, analyzed and whatever the data is available after the learning step, it moves to the classification. The test data set, the in the classification, the test data set is fed up by the test data set are fed to the model to check the accuracy of the classification rules. And the, after the accuracy of the classification rules is completed, if the model gives an accepted results, then it will apply to the new data set with an unknown class variables. So after the classification rules are satisfied with the accuracy level, that means accuracy levels with a minimum support of the accuracy levels will be supported to the particular data set. Then these model will give to the accept uh, more to the unknown classes of the variables. Let's take this uh, is an a creating of the decision tree. For example, the data set is uh, the data training data is available here. Training data is available here. In this training data, we have a name, age, income, and loan decision. In this loan decision, if the data is analyzed and it can be applied by using the classification algorithm, if the, if the classification rules are given here. What are the classification rules? If age, youth, then loan decision is risky. Youth means uh, they are not employed, or if they are employed, uh, in the youth cases means the loan, the loan decision is risky. And if the income is high, then loan decision is safe. Why? Because if the customer have a high income, then he is uh, able to, and he can able to pay the loan return back to the bank. So he is in a safe. If age is a middle aged and income is low, then the loan is decision is risky. Why? Because if age is a middle aged also, there is no income to, to that particular category. So it is a risky decision. So these are all the classification rules applied. These classification rules apply to the training data. After the training data is applied under the classification, then the rules and the data will be formed by these like this. Here the test data is resulted is came out from the classification rules. That is, uh, what are the safety risk, uh, what are the safe and what are the risky values will be taken. And then, then the uh, whatever the data is safe zone, those safe zone will be moved into the next data set that is a new data to the next process. Like this. This is the uh, algorithm of the decision tree. Here the algorithm of the decision tree generates the from the training tables of the data partition D. What are the inputs taken from the data partition D is which the set of data training tuples and their associated class tables will be taken. And the attribute list, the set of candidate attributes will be taken. And the attribute selection method, like the procedure of the determining the splitting criteria that the best partitions of the data tuples into an individual classes. Uh, these criteria consist, this, uh, consists of an a splitting attributes and the possibility either a splitting point or the splitting subject. Uh, the resultant will be the decision tree. So by applying all the inputs, the resultant will be the decision tree and we are following this method. This method will have an uh, the algorithm will have a very clearly that is a create a root node. That create a node, the node is like as an N. So the node is, uh, is a, the node is considered as an N. If tuple, tuple means that particular entity value, if tuple in D or all the same classes, then it will be represented as the same then will be represented as a C, then returns N as a leaf node label with the C. So 
uh, if all tuples uh, in the D are all the same classes, then it will represent it as C. Then, if the tuples are all in the C classes, then N as a leaf node with a label to the C. So, root node is there, and the root node will have an internal node as a C, and the C will have an A uh, leaf node which is labeled as a C. If attribute list is empty, then it goes to the process. So, these are all the steps we are following in the algorithm. Now, what is a decision tree induction? Why the decision tree induction will have to use? That decision tree induction is a method of a learning decision trees from the training set. From the training set. This training set consists of an attributes on the class labels. So each training set will consist of a attributes and class labels. The attributes are considered as an internal node and the class labels are considered as an leaf nodes. Applications of the decision tree induction includes the astronomy and the financial analysis, medical diagnostics and manufacturing or production. So these are all the similar and the applications of the decision tree. A decision tree is the same like as in a flowchart flow tree-like tree structure that is made up of an, a training set of a tuples. These training tuples will have an, a data set is broken down into a smaller parts like as in a divide and conquer rule policy uh, into a, a smaller subsets and is presented in the form of a nodes like in a tree. So the full tree is a form as in a nodes like structure. The tree structure has a root node, internal node, decision nodes, leaf nodes and the branches. So these are all the uh, structure of the decision tree. The root node is the topmost node. It represents the best uh, attribute selected for the classification. How you will identify the root node means? Uh, we have a calculation formula but uh, with the root node. That means uh, the majority of the numbers will have a maximum support found with an S that is in a safe. So in that cases of the node only will consider it as an root node and it's in a measure of the data set will represents the key point. The root node is the topmost node and it represents the best attribute selected for the classification. So the root node is the best attribute of the classification of the data set. The internal node of the decision nodes represents the test of an attribute of the data set like as a leaf node or terminal node which represents the classification or decision of the data set classification or decision label the classification of the decision label means it shows the clear values that is an s or no safe or risk good or bad so like this the decision label will specify you and it clearly shows you that particular attribute is a valid attribute or invalid attribute so the branches shows the outcome of the test performance some decision trees only have a binary node, so that means exactly two branches of the node, which, uh, while some decision trees have a, uh, binary trees and non-binary trees. So the image shows below the decision tree for the uh, data set to predict whether the passenger will survive or not. So here the passenger will survive or not means is sex male, yes or no. Is X means that is a greater than after 9.5 uh, percentage uh, question mark or survived so this is the sample decision tree by following all the rules of the classification rules and now the decision tree induction for machine learning that is an id3 the machine learning id3 will have a few steps to follow uh, in the late 1970s and the early 1980s j rose quillen was a researcher who built an a decision tree algorithm for machine learning this algorithm is also known as an id3 or iterative Model. This algorithm is a, will have, was an extension of the concept learning system described by the E.B. Hunt or E.B. Hunt, J. and Marin. So ID3 later coming to be known as an C4.5, C4.5, ID3 and C4.5 follows an a greedy and top down approaches for the construction of the decision trees. So but to construct a decision tree, the previously we discussed about the, what is a greedy discussion and a greedy classification. The algorithm starts with a training data set with the class labels that are portioned into a smaller 
substance as a tree is being constructed. So initially there are the three parameters in the construction of the decision tree by using a machine learning of an ID3. Uh, where are the attribute list, attribute selection method and the data partition. The data attribute, the attribute list, uh, list describes the attributes of the training set of the troubles. So the attribute list describes the overall training set of the troubles. And the second one is the selection method. The selection method describes the method of the selecting where the best attribute for the uh, discrimination among the tuples. The method is used for the attribute selection can be either information gain or guinea index. So we will discuss later about what is the information gain and guinea index. And the third step is the next structure of the tree. Whether the structure of the tree is in a binary tree or non-binary tree will be decided by the attribute selection method. So the attribute selection method will identify after constructing. So in the beginning of the construction only whether these three will be considered as a binary tree or non-binary tree. Uh, when the construction of the decision tree starts, uh, is a, it starts as a single node representing that is a tuple on the internal node and with the root node. So if the root node tuple represents the different class labels, for example, it is considered as a big decision tree of the education institutions. So that root node will have an n number of the tuples with the like students, professors, data, employability and free reimbursement. So like all the tuples, uh, internal tuples will come into the uh, root node. So if the root node tuple represents the different class labels, then it falls as an attribute selection method. So if a, if a root node will have an multiple tuples, then it is called as an attribute selection method to split or partition the tuples. The step, uh, this step will lead the information of the branches and the decision tree and the decision tree. The, slipping, uh, the splitting method will determine which attribute should be selected to the par uh, partition of the data tuple and it also determines the branches to grow, which, which branches have any uh, more comfortability and which branch will give an a test outcome. So the outcome will be an a good, uh, good factor or bad factor. So which tuple will give us an a outcome that, uh, that that branch only will have the node selections. And then the main motive of the splitting criteria is that the partition of the each branch of the decision tree should represent the class label very clearly. That is an a same class label. So we have to maintain only two class labels uh, with an a one of the class labels have been used in the previously, that means in the upper node selections, the same class labels will have to follow in the next level also. Uh, the above uh, pruning steps are followed recursively to form a decision tree for the training set of a tuples. So these are all the two uh, types of the values. One is the uh, discrete value and the second one is the continuous value. We have a two categories of the value uh, trees will be followed. One is like a color is the root node under red, green, yellow, blue. Or income is in a less than 20,000 or greater than 20,000. So these are all the continuous values and uh, uh, discrete values. The partitioning stops with the only whether the all the partitions are made or when the remaining tuples can't be partitioned further list. So we were stopping that one, whether the leaf, leaf node will come, there is no leaf node, uh, if there is no leaf nodes, then the decision tree or the classification model will be stopped at that one. The complexity of the algorithm is described by using the n store uh, log, n store d or log d where n is the number of attributes in the training data set, training data set d and d is the number of tuples. Then here the how to select and how to create a decision tree. We discussed in the previously one uh, we got the information gain and uh, gain ratio in index. So these three factors, these three methods, these are these three methods will have you no know, information of the overall data and which node has to be selected as a root node and which node has to be selected as an attribute node will be decided by using these by using this information. And what are the main, how to select the attributes for the creating a tree? To create a decision tree, how we have to select the attributes and how we have to use that particular attribute. Attribute selection measures are also called as any splitting rules uh, to decide how the tuples are going to split. The splitting criteria are used to best partition of that particular data set 
these measures provides you at ranking to the particular attributes for partitioning of the training tables these are the most popular methods for selecting an attribute of the information gain or gain index what is an information gain what is an information gain this method is a main method that is used for the building in a decision tree it reduces the information that uh, that is required to classify the tuples so this is the major method and a main method to decide to build an a decision tree and it reduces the number of the tests that are uh, needed to classify the given tuples so by using these formulas by using these formulas we will reduce the number of steps and the attribute with have a highest information gain is selected so which attribute got an highest information gain value that information gain value is selected as an attribute the original information needed for the classification of a tuple or any data set d is given by e of s is equal to sigma c i is equal to 1 where the minus p of i log 2 p of i for example the information gain value s is of 9 and no uh, sort of 5 then we are considering a sigma of uh 9 by 9 by 14 log 2 of 9 by 14 so that value which value will gets a high range of the value so that value will considered as an a uh, term uh, attribute of that particular value where p is the probability where p is the probability that the tuple belongs to the class c the information is encoded uh, in bits so uh, where the class c is have an a information is encoded in bits therefore the log to log to the base 2 is used as a then log to log to the base 2 is used e of s represents the average amount of the information required to find out the class label of the data set where data set d the information gain is also called as an entropy so uh, what is an entropy means the information gain is also called entropy the information required to the exact classification method exact classification method after partitioning is given by the formula of e of t comma x is equal to sigma sigma p of c or e of c where p of c is the weight of the partition this information present represents the information needed to classify the data set d on the partitioning by x in the information gain the same uh, difference between the original and the expected information that is required to classify the tuples of the data set d where it gives an a uh, final result of the gain values so the gain is the reduction of the information that is required by knowledge of the x and the attribute with the highest information gain is chosen as a best thing that is a gain p of x is equal to entropy t minus entropy of the t of x so with this value uh, e of s value and e of t of x value will gives the gain value for the best tuple the next one is the gain ratio what is the gain ratio why the gain ratio is required in the selection of the decision tree how to select an attribute of the creating a tree so information gain may sometimes results in the partitioning useless of the classification however the gain ratio splits the training data set into a partitions are considered as a the number of tuples of the outcomes with the respect of the total tuples uh, the attribute uh, with the maximum gain ratio is used for the splitting attributes so which value will got an accurate and uh, maximum gain ratio is called as a splitting attribute that is a gain ratio a is equal to gain of a by split info of d so by using these gain ratios we will identify the uh, max gain ratio and its use for the attributes the next one is the gain index so the index is calculated for any binary variables only so the gain index where uh, is calculated for only binary variables only it measures the impurity in the training tuples of the data set d as gain 1 minus 1 sigma of p of i by t whole square p of i by t square so p is the probability that tuples belongs to the class of c and the gain index that calculates for the binary split data set d by data set uh, a is the 
given by the value of the ini split is equal to sigma of k i is equal to 1 ni by n so that is a make ini of i where n is the n partitions of the data set d the reduction is an impurity where the reduction is an impurity that impurity value is reduced by using the differences of the gini index and the original data set d and the gini index after the partition by the attribute k so we are partitioning the attribute a by using the gini index and the attribute original data set values the maximum reduction of the impurity or the max gini index is selected as a best attribute for the splitting so the max attribute will be selected by using the gini index so these are all the three major and the most popular methods for selecting an attribute one is an information gain second one is a gain ratio third one is a gini index the next one is overfit in the decision trees overfit happens when the decision tree uh, tries to be as a uh, to be set as in a perfect or a possible by increasing the values with the depth of the test and the their thereby reduces the errors of the values these results are the very complex and uh, very complex uh, and that leads to the overfitting of the decision values the overfit reduces the predictive nature the maximum of the overfit reduces the predictive nature of the values predictive nature of the decision trees this approach will uh, to avoid the overfitting of the trees and uh, type maybe represents the this approach to uh, avoid the overfitting of the uh, tree includes the pre pruning and the post pruning we have a pre pruning is there in the pre pruning what is a tree pruning how many ways uh, what are the how many ways of the pruning the tree will be there maximum the pruning is a method of the removing the unused branches from the decision tree unused branches from the decision tree some branches of the decision tree might represents the outer layer or noisy data or missing data values are represented in the decision tree to remove those decision tree to remove those noisy data we are using a tree pruning techniques in this tree pruning is a method to reduce the unwanted branches of the trees this will reduce the complexity of the trees and helps to efficient predictive analysis so it gives an efficient predictive analysis it reduces the overfit of the values and it removes the unimportant branches from the tree so if you remove the unimportant branches of the tree automatically the tree will improve the accuracy so to maintain the accuracy of the decision tree or the classification model we are applying this tree pruning in the tree pruning we have a two types of the pruning techniques are there one is a pre pruning and the second one is a post pruning when the pre pruning is applied and when the post pruning is applied means in the pre pruning this in this approach the construction of the decision tree is stopped earlierly so the construction of the decision tree will stopped earlierly it means the decision not to be further partition of the branches the last node constructed becomes uh, the leaf node and this leaf node may hold the most frequent classes among of all the tuples and gives the decision of that particular leaf node the attribute selection measures are used to find out the weightage so the attribute selection measures are used to find out the weightage of the split and the threshold values are prescribed to decide which splits are the regarded as any useful and if the if the partition of the nodes result is in a splitting by failing below the thresholds then the process is halted so automatically if that particular uh, values will be halted the halted means that uh, pruning technique is stopped for the decision tree automatically the decision tree will have to stop under at that stage only so this is the pre pruning to reduce the accuracy to reduce the uh, noisy data or the missing data values will be applied in the pruning what is a post pruning in the post this method removes the outer layer branches so uh, in the pre pruning we are stopping the decision tree the before only that means the the construction of the decision tree is stopped earlier in the post pruning this method removes the outer layer branches of the from the fully grown trees so fully grown trees means already constructed uh, constructed trees uh, we are removing the outer layer branches the unwanted branches are removed and replaced by the leaf nodes denoting the most frequent class labels so denoting the most frequent class labels will be replaced by using the post pruning techniques 
this training uh, this technique requires uh, the more computation on the more computation than the pre pruning technique however it is a more reliable technique of the decision tree the pruner trees are the maximum the more precious of the compact when compared with the unpruned uh, trees but the carry of the disadvantages of the replication and the repetition will be removed the repetition occurs when uh, the same attribute is tested again and again over along with a branch of the tree the replication will occur the replication or the repetition process will be done automatically the availability and the tree construction the tree length of the tree will be reduced so with the replication process when the duplicate sub trees are presented within the tree there is an issue to be solved with a multi blade splits so uh this is the uh, what is in a pruning and this is the measure of the construction of the trees thank you